All right, so that's my volume parameters. If I wanted to show, for example, my cut plot and how that varied over time, I can do that here. Just turn on wireframe, go to the front view here, and, oops, did I do that right? There we go. Go to the front view, and I wanna create a visual representation of this as it changes over time. So for that, I'm gonna right click and choose animation. Now normally when you do an animation um, in a steady state plot, it's just gonna animate the cut plot through the domain. In other words, it's just gonna say, well, let's show you the cut plot as it moves from front to back. But I wanted to do a, uh, a scenario of the time steps, the transient movement, uh, over time. Notice I've got this parameter. I can also do uh, probes and things like that to show values here. But what I'm going to do to create a transient animation is to come over here and click on this little wizard. And the flow animation wizard, you tell it how long you want your video to be, not necessarily how long the study or the, the, the physical time is. For a transient plot, tell it to delete all existing tracks, do not rotate the model, and say you want to do a scenario animation. Then when you hit next, you'll say how you want it distributed. I want it uniformly distributed by physical time. Start and finish are automatically developed based on the result plots I have available. I hit finish, and now it puts in all these dots. These are the result files. These are the keyframes for the temperature as it goes along. Now the only other step you have to do is you have to basically manually now turn on the plots you want visible. So I want my cut plot visible. I come to time zero, right click and insert control point. And all that does is it says you are active from there to there, right? If I wanted, for example, the surface plot to come on here and then be visible for the rest, I could do that. But let's go ahead and hit play and it's gonna generate. Now it's gonna take a little while to generate because it's gotta regenerate the plot every single time step um, to see where we're at. So sometimes if it takes a long time, I'll actually hit record rather than hitting play because you can't really tell what's going on until you watch it later on. Now, so far this is pretty boring. I may need to run it again after adjusting my uh, temperature scale, right? Right now it's a static temperature scale, uh, so it's gonna be very easy to understand, but it's not necessarily the most visual thing in the world. And as the heat starts to rise, look at this, the heat does start to go, oh, and then my surface plot turned on. The heat does start to go up where I expected it to go, and it's heating those components directly above it. But then, the thing that I didn't expect is at full, you know, full free convection, full steady state free convection, the airflow comes pouring in from the sides and deflects it and heats up that, that uh, component, that lower component. So what we may be finding out is during initial startup and at more reasonable temperatures, it's very likely that uh, my original assumption was more accurate, but again, more study is needed. You learn more about the questions to ask and the behavior, the more you do this, the more you study it. And there's something you're gonna find you pick up, and that is the ability to basically understand or predict in a lot of ways, predict uh, what uh, a study is gonna do or what a, a physical you know, design is likely to do. Uh, you just sort of get a, a feeling for this. So I'm gonna I change the color maximum to the plot maximum, uh, so that way it's not the global full maximum, and now it gives me a little bit more resolution, a little bit more definition on what's going on. But there you go, I've got my animation. I can save it out as an AVI file, but I've got that finished up. 